Today, AMD makes a weird move with Ryzen 9000, more FPS for all, first benchmarks on AMD's new Ryzen APUs, and RTX 5000 is set to be a monster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD is set to do something really odd for their Ryzen 9000 release. As the leak suggested, AMD's next-gen motherboard skipped the 700 series and went straight to the 800 series. And here in Computex, motherboard makers shared their designs, but it seemed that this may have been a last-minute decision because at least some motherboard vendors didn't seem ready. For example, MSI only showed off two 800 series boards and they definitely weren't high-end. Well, we now have a new report from Hardware Lux, and according According to this, motherboards with X870 and X870e chipsets will not be available at the launch of Ryzen 9000 processors. AMD will launch the new models using the already available boards. So yeah, AMD is apparently planning to release Ryzen 9000 without a new series of motherboards, which is of course surprising. I mean, it's one thing to not have a new chipset to release, but it's another thing entirely to have it, but just not release it with the new CPUs. Mostly because if you aren't already on AM5, you'd likely wait to buy Ryzen 9000 so you can get the new board. Either way, if you're interested in AMD's next-gen Ryzen, I'll have affiliate links down to those in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Next up for today, we're finally set to get free FPS in all our games thanks to some new tech that was just announced by Microsoft. It's called Automatic Super Resolution, and it's way better than what you've likely heard. For starters, Microsoft hasn't told us exactly how it works, but it's an OS-level upscaling technology. That's not to be confused with their Direct SR tech, which is basically just a way for developers to add AMD, Nvidia, and Intel's upscaling with just one API. And that's obviously nice, but with Automatic Super Resolution, game developers don't have to add support for it at all, which means it works in a ton of games already, and that's actually one of the first big misconceptions. When Microsoft first announced it, they made it seem like it only works with a select number of games. But according to a new report by The Verge, you can turn it on for many DirectX 11 and 12 titles, presumably all of them, but it will give you a warning that using AutoSR may cause unexpected results. It just automatically works with the selected games they mention. Not only that, that, but it seemed like this was a technology that's exclusively for Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite chips. In fact, it even said that it was required on their system requirements, but that isn't the case. Qualcomm actually spoke with The Verge and confirmed that the language used there is because the Snapdragon X Elite chip is just referring to what's available today. But if any other technology can meet Microsoft's performance threshold, that won't be the case anymore. Specifically, they need to support Copilot Plus as well as an MPU that's fast enough, because this works off of that MPU. Well, as you can see here, AMD's new APUs support Copilot Plus, so we can all but guarantee that they will be supported, along with Intel's next-gen mobile chips. Not to mention that before long, I would assume discrete GPUs will likely be supported that can handle the matrix operations. Not only that, but given it uses AI, maybe it'll do better than other solutions. Time, as always, will tell. Next up, we have our first benchmarks on AMD's newly announced Ryzen APUs. And let's just say this is one seriously impressive jump, especially for gamers. Of course, I was mostly focusing on AMD's desktop Ryzen 9000 during the release, but if AMD brings these bad boys to desktop, they could make for a seriously impressive rig. Don't forget that the highest end Ryzen 9 HX370 is a 12-core CPU instead of 8, though it's a mixture of Zen 5 and Zen 5C cores, but then the iGPU is not only an RD in A3.5, but it's also 16 CUs instead of 12. Well, we now have benchmarks of that part, and it's looking amazing. The benchmarks come from Geekbench, and we have Geekbench 6, Geekbench 5.4.5, and OpenCL. What's wild is that this must be an early engineering sample because it only got up to 4.2 GHz while the rated clock is up to 5.1, which is of course a massive difference. But despite that, it was able to beat the last gen part by 20% in multi thread and 7% in single thread. And going from 4.2 to 5.1 is 21% more right there. Moving over to OpenCL, we can see the iGPU, which is the Radeon 890M, scored 41,995 points, which is an unbelievable 40% jump over last gen's Radeon 780M. Basically, if this bad boy comes to desktop, it's gonna make for some very happy gamers. 
And lastly for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series has been rumored to come with GDDR7 for quite a while now. In fact, the most recent reports give the 5090 a very nice 28GB of GDDR7. Well, Micron has finally made GDDR7 official, and they actually talk gaming performance with the new memory as well. But before I get to that, spec-wise, the new video memory offers 32 gigabit die speeds and 1.5 terabytes per second bandwidth for a 60% boost when compared to GDDR6. It also offers a 50% power efficiency improvement and a new sleep mode that reduces standby power by up to 70%. But like I said, they also mention gaming, and here you can see that they claim GDDR7 achieves a quote, significant jump in frames per second for ray tracing and rasterization workloads. And they even give us real numbers, with it being an average of over 30% more FPS, but getting even more in ray tracing and 4K. Basically, NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs may even be better than we originally thought, especially if it can get these kind of performance boosts from GDDR7. I mean, even in rasterization, it shows a bigger jump going from 6x to 7 than it does going from GDDR6 to 6x. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs, or are you more excited for AMD's upcoming APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!